welcome all to the Digital Public Library America West Meeting. Hooray! Um, we're, this is uh, part of the ongoing mission of the Digital Public Library American to, to define itself, um, demonstrate real use to Americans and to people around the world. Um, I'm Brewster Kale, the digital librarian at the Internet Archive. This is our home, so welcome to our home. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we're, we're a library, um, and we bought this building a couple of years ago because it matched our logo. Um, we had visions of flattening the floor and making this whole space into a grand library, but exactly what does a library look like in this digital age, we didn't quite know, so we left the pews in. So thank you for, uh, for uh, sitting in pews. As, as Garrison Keillor would put it, it's seats for sinners. So if you uh, so go in and standing up every so often, uh, I'd say is a, a, a good thing, but please uh, in, enjoy. Another couple of, of, of uh, administrative points. Uh, there should be internet access that works. Uh, internet archive, you're on a 10 gigabit connection to the internet, so if you want to download something, Now's your time to do it. Um, there's, <clears throat> there's restrooms downstairs on either side, and there's even a porta potty out front. Please wander around the building and enjoy. And uh, a couple of things that you um, just are sort of fun and games. Um, if you turn around and, and see the, 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 the blue blinking lights, those are servers of the Internet Archive that are serving uh, the, pop, the public. Um, that's about two and a half petabytes of data that is stored there, and every time a light blinks is either somebody downloading something or uploading something to the Internet Archive. We get about two million people a day using the Internet Archive collections, uh, and so that's what, that's what that is. The little, uh, the little guys on the sides um, are, are terracotta archivists. They're, they're us, uh, if you will. If you work for the Internet Archive for three years, you get a little statue of you. Um, and uh, it is sort of our way of saying thank you, uh, as we imagined what the Emperor of China did a few years ago. Um, there's another st sort of stop on your tour that I hope you'll make uh, sometime when you're on a break or at lunchtime. Around the corner is a scanning center of the Internet Archive. We scan about 1,000 books a day in 30 scanning centers in six countries. So, and books, microfilm, and there's also whole movies being digitized down there. So just go around the corner and go and introduce yourself and look around and poke around. Um, it's pretty fun. So we're, we see ourselves as a node in the uh, uh, burgeoning constellation that is going to be the Digital Public Library America. Um, still not actually sure exactly how it weaves together um, this, this world, but we know that everything's now digital. Uh, that we really want, at least if it's going to be majorly accessed, it's going to be in digital form. So really getting our libraries moving forward uh, into this digital world to digitize existing materials, collect materials that are already digital, and help people find, access, use, build, uh, and love our cultural heritage that is now in digital form is the goal of the Digital Public Library of America. Thank you and welcome very much to this, this meeting. Hope you have a good time. Uh, next is Luis Huera, the uh, librarian at uh, the San Francisco Public Library. Thank you and good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be here, uh, the House of Brewster, and very <laughs> spiritual in many ways. Um, but I also want to mention that uh, it's really an honor to be part of the steering committee for DPLA and to have the opportunity to co-host along with the Internet Archives. You know, I should do a shout out for Brewster because we have an amazing relationship and partnership with the Internet Archives. How lucky are we to have it in our own backyard and to, to be able to work together? So we actually engaged in what we call a partnership for workforce development. About a year and a half ago, we actually jointly hired uh, almost 65 individuals that were unemployed to help us in a digital scanning project. The result of that benefited not only the Internet Archives, but certainly the San Francisco Public Library in being able to digitize about 2,100 items that were previously not available to our public. So it was really, really a wonderful opportunity to work together, and we hope to continue uh, in those endeavors. But I'm also here to represent, if you will, the perspective of public libraries. I am 
so um, thrilled to be a part of it because the digital public library does hold tremendous hope and opportunity for public librarians and the work that we do in so many ways. Uh, first of all, we all know the story that's unfolding nationwide about the resurgence of libraries during this economic downturn. Uh, San Francisco obviously is, is no exception. We're seeing remarkable resurgence of use. Uh, this year we'll see about 7 million people visit our libraries. Almost 13 million items circulated throughout uh, the city. So it's fantastic to see that. We're also going through an amazing renaissance for our building program because San Franciscans have really put their money where their mouth is in terms of demonstrating the commitment to secure stable funding and expand our services. So we've actually renovated 16 neighborhood libraries. Some of these are beautiful Carnegie libraries. Uh, we've also built eight new buildings. We've completed 22 of 24 projects. So talk about a major uh, transformation. We're delighted about that. But I want to add that it's more than the physical spaces that makes this city special. It's also about the amazing collections and resources that we have, um, and certainly the dynamic staff that makes it all happen. What we want to do, and one of the reasons we're excited about DPLA is because these collections, whether it's about the uh, 1906 earthquake, or it's about the amazing legacy of Harvey Milk and the archives that we have in our library, all of that is the tip of the iceberg. And we want to see that cultural narrative um, shared not only at the local level, but at the state level, global level, if you will. So that's the opportunity that DPLA holds for us, and we want to share. And so we want to hear about the benefits that we would gain by participating, but also uh, not only our nation, but, but the world in terms of these collections. The other reflection I have is that it's also very important to have the ethnic and racial communities represented in DPLA. And to that end, uh, what better city than to represent, whether it's from the Mission, to Chinatown, to Japantown, all those amazing local archives that at some point we'd love to see shared throughout the world and throughout the nation. So we're very excited about participating. We're delighted to be co-hosting with uh, the Internet Archives. Uh, and so I hope you have a terrific day, because yesterday we certainly had a very solid dialogue uh, with the various work stream participants and made some great progress uh, towards the future of DPLA. So with that, I'd like to now introduce the vice chair of our steering committee and a wonderful supporter through the Sloan Foundation. He's also vice chair of the Sloan Foundation, Doran Weber. Doran. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Luis. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Sloan Foundation and to participate in this first ever West Coast plenary meeting on the creation of a digital public library of America. This is the first, right? Uh, although DPLA is a national and ultimately a global concept, a worldwide network or web of libraries, universities, archives, and museums, much of the innovation underlying the digital revolution was born and continues to thrive on the West Coast, so it's very fitting that we assemble here. It's great to see such an impressive group of leaders and experts and students, people who care about libraries and education and literacy and community. Thank you also to the DPLA Steering Committee and to the DPLA Secretariat at the Berkman Center, so masterfully steered by John Palfrey, and a special thank you to our host, the visionary Brewster Kale, and his team at the Internet Archive. As we gather to, uh, to uh, discuss several key issues, we note that despite significant progress, many hard decisions remain to be made. We are still grappling with the fundamental question of what exactly is the DPLA and what content will it contain, whether it will be a mere pointer to other collections or some kind of repository, how will it deal with orphan works and the in-copyright material, or whether it should deal with them at all? Who will be DPLA's first leader, executive director? We have exactly one year to conduct our search and fill this position. And where and how will he or she govern and raise funds and oversee a sustainable business model? And who will actually use the DPLA? How will they access it? And what value added will they get once they arrive there? These are all legitimate, even urgent questions, and we need to resolve them or at least to find sufficient answers in the next 12 months so we can be up and running in a phase one DPLA by April 2013. But we should not forget how far we've already come. People have been talking about and striving towards the dream of an integrated digital library system for close to 20 years. The digital revolution may have rendered the traditional library obsolete, but it also gave us the tools, the World Wide Web, mass digitization, linked data and interoperability, virtual clouds, to create a new paradigm 
where individuals can go to access all the information and the knowledge that human civilization has to offer online while preserving the physical library as a local center for community, citizenship, education, and empowerment. The Sloan Foundation has been pursuing, or should I say chasing, this vision for about eight years now through our Universal Access to Knowledge program. We were early supporters of the Internet Archive, the Library of Congress, Wikipedia, the Boston Library Consortium, Lyricist, Biodiversity Heritage Library, and the Medical Heritage Library, among others. In October 2010, we gave a small grant to the Radcliffe Institute for a meeting hosted by Robert Darnton, where participants agreed to work together toward the creation of, and I quote, an open distributed network of comprehensive online resources that would draw on the nation's living heritage from libraries, universities, archives, and museums in order to educate, inform, and empower everyone in the current and future generations. I can still recall standing before the whiteboard with an early draft of that sentence and having 40 very prominent attendees, many of whom are in this room, edit it for me while I pleaded that whatever changes they wanted and whatever other issues they had, we all agree on one teeny eeny little statement. That meeting and that sentence generated enormous excitement and energy. In December 2010, Sloan gave the Berkman Center at Harvard a planning grant to act as a secretariat for this effort, provisionally called Digital Public Library of America, or DPLA. And by January 2011, a Blue Ribbon Steering Committee had been formed and an active wiki and discussion listserv created. In March, the first meeting on co content and scope, one of the six work streams was held at Harvard's Berkman Center. In April, DPLA engaged with many funders and secured additional support from the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Open Society Institute. In May, we held a workshop in Amsterdam on linked data and interoperability, and also met with Europeana about ways we might work together. We also mounted a beta sprint to develop a working technical prototype. In June, we held another workshop at the Library of Congress on technical architecture, and the Sloan Foundation approved an $836,000 grant to the Berkeley Law Center to support the legal work stream of the DPLA initiative by developing solutions to copyright law obstacles facing public library initiatives. By July, over 40 served submissions for the beta sprint were received, and in September, an expert review panel selected the most promising candidates for development. And in October 2011, the DPLA concept was officially launched at a plenary meeting in Washington, D.C., hosted by the National Archives. Supported by a $2.5 million grant from Sloan and a matching $2.5 million grant from Arcadia, we announced a grassroots process to build a concrete work plan for a national digital library system to develop a functional technical prototype and to pilot content digitization efforts, which are going to focus on immigration. That was only six months ago, and in the interim, there have been a flurry of work streams, meetings, and workshops, and legal conferences, and technical developments culminating in today's plenary. That initial sentence is now a seven-page concept paper, and while key questions remain, the DPLA vision is clarifying and solidifying. The Digital Public Library of America is a big, bold idea for our digital age, a collaborative, public-private effort to support and complement our existing library system and to enhance access to knowledge for people everywhere. We are on the verge of a major transformation, and it's great to watch it grow and develop and to be a small part of it. Thank you for coming and hopefully for believing in this vision and for helping us to make it into a new reality. And now I'd like to introduce uh, John Palfrey, the chair of the steering committee. Thank you. Thank you, Doran. <clears throat> Doran, thank you so much. And of course, you are much more than a small part of this, but a sustained supporter of so many of us in the room, uh, starting with Brewster and uh, all the way through. Uh, thank you for your sustained commitment to this idea. And importantly, thanks to all of you uh, for being here for this uh, West Coast plenary kickoff. We couldn't be more excited about it. Um, a series of important thanks from the Secretariat, one to Brewster and Robert and their teams. This is a public-private partnership um, in, its, in every form. And the extent to which yesterday we were at San Francisco Public Library working with Luis and Jill and their teams, today with Brewster and Robert and ours, the Berkman Center team from uh, the East Coast, and I want to thank in particular our colleagues Robert Darton, Maura Marks, Rebecca Haycock, and others. This is a wonderful collaboration. I'd like just one more time to thank Brewster and, uh, and also Luis for their local hosting of this kickoff. So in a couple minutes, we're going to have the uh, exciting perspectives on the DPLA session where a handful of people from very diverse uh, perspectives will come and talk about why this is so important and why it's so exciting. And uh, for those of you who are going to be on this next panel, you're going to come around that screen and then uh, up to here. So in a moment, I will uh, call you up. But just a couple of logistical notes before we do that. 
Um, first, the hashtag for the event is pound DPLA West. We hugely encourage tweeting and blogging and photographs and so forth, so please do uh, uh, send those things out. Take pictures of the great graphic artists as they render what's going on and spread this uh, broadly to the world. Um, I want to send a particular shout out to those people who are uh, here in the pews, but also those who are not right now in the room. We had, as we did with our East Coast plenary, the uh, exciting and disappointing thing of having to close registration at 400 people. We shut off registration some time ago, but what happened was a bunch of people said, we want to live stream this in uh, nodes out there in the world. So just as we'll have nodes of the DPLA, we have nodes of watchers. So I want to send a particular shout out on the, um, the video cast here to uh, our friends at Simmons in Boston, New York Public Library Labs, the Sterling and Francine Clark Art Institute in Massachusetts, the Southern Tier Library System, South Central Regional Library Council, Utica Public Library, and Raycow Research Library, all in New York, that are holding live streams right now. So thank you all for joining, and lots of individuals out there. We welcome you to San Francisco, even if you're not with us in person, and very much hope that you will be later. So um, it's truly great, I think, to have this hybrid uh, experience of people in the pews and uh, active here in the Church of Brewster and Internet Archive, as well as uh, active in uh, the digital form. And I think that's a great metaphor uh, for what we're doing and what we're building. And if you get anything out of uh, today's events, I hope it's a sense of growing excitement and growing momentum of the sort that Doran described and that you understand uh, as warmly as possible the, the very big welcome uh, from all of us involved in this project, um, whether you're in a public library uh, or in a private setting, whether you're in the government or in the private sector, this is something that we uh, uh, truly see as an open and inclusive movement building toward an amazing public resource and hope that you will join us after today as well, whether you're on the video cast or here right now. Um, so now we're going to pivot to the first panel, so I'll encourage our uh, next uh, speakers to come around this way, and please join me in thanking our welcoming panel, uh, and we'll be with you in a moment.